Don't forget that. And here's the current price. See, oops, what did I do? Sorry. Okay. So. So, um, here's what you're hoping is going to happen. Uh, the current price you're hoping is, uh, let's say, 20 which means the market value at day one, which is now, will be what? Well, it's uh, $20 times minus 100, which is minus 2,000. Hmm, okay. But remember, we have um, 5,000 units of cash, which has a price of $1.00. And had a market value of date zero of plus five thousand, and uh, still has a price of one dollar. It's kind of silly, I realize, um, and uh, it's still worth five thousand. So we notice here now. Oh my gosh, plus three thousand, and uh, this is yours. This is your equity. Okay, that's your profit. Um, and this is what you're hoping happens. But it, if it's going to happen, it won't happen until later. Now, let me show you what could happen. Okay, I'm just going to um, erase part of this. Okay, here's what could happen. Um, here in the future, the price, instead of being 20, uh, might end up being, I'll put it in a different color, put it in a red. Price, end up, might, price might end up being 70. Okay, 70 times minus 100 will give us a market value, a current market value, market value at date one of minus 7,000. And it's going to change my, oops, there is no equity. It's going to be negative 2,000. Oops. What happened? Well, that can happen. Okay, well, your broker knows this can happen. So guess what? You have to post margin when you do short sales also. Okay, uh, you have to post margin when you do short sales also. There's the same concept, initial margin deposit and initial margin percentage and uh, maintenance margin percentage. Um, same concepts apply. And um, let me show you how that works. Okay, so... We initial stick with the current example. Um, you, you short sold 100 shares at uh, 50. So <clears throat> times 50 equals minus 5,000. That's your um, position in um, XYZ. But in cash, you've got plus 5,000. Okay? These are called, this is the short sale proceeds. That 5000 is the short sale proceeds. But you are required to post 50% of the short sale proceeds, which in this case would be $2,500. Okay? So your initial margin deposit for the short sale was $2,500. Okay? And um, so you just have more cash in your account. It's, it's your money in your account, but it's kind of encumbered by your potential liability here um, by your broker, okay? So let's now see what happens. Um, um, well, the same concept applies as we saw apply in with uh, margin purchases, and that is that this concept of, a mate, of a, an initial margin percentage, I am percentage, that's 50%. I've already talked about that. And a maintenance margin percentage, which we're going to pretend is still 30%, maybe 35%. It doesn't matter. 30% is what we're going to pretend it is. And you have to keep your actual margin percentage um, uh, greater than or equal to um, 30% to avoid... margin calls to avoid a margin call okay but the formula to calculate actual margin difference differs for short sales 
the formula for actual margin is A minus L over L. In both cases, margin purchase and short sale, the value that appears in the denominator down here is the value that changes as the market price of the stock changes. So please pay attention. The assets are going to be your short sale proceeds plus your initial margin deposit. Okay? Your liability is equal to the uh, current uh, market price times the number of shares that you are short. Okay, very important that you understand that you see that the current market price of the number of shares that you are short. Okay, that's what it is. Current market price times the number of shares that you are short. So in our prior example, just to remind you, we were, <coughs> excuse me, short 100 shares at 50, uh, $50 to start. So initially, when we, um, when we kind of started this, um, so here the, the L, I'll put the L in, the L's were 5,000. I guess it's the absolute value, uh, but you needn't be concerned with details. It, I, it's, it's right as it's shown here. Um, so I'm just putting that in first. Then the assets are, well, short sale proceeds was five grand. Initial margin deposit was half of that, or 2,500. So here we had 7,500. And of course, if you do the arithmetic, you're gonna get 2,500 over 5,000, which of course is equal to 0.5, which is 50%. So our actual margin percentage, of course, initially is equal to the initial margin percentage as required. But as time goes by, that's going to change, okay? And again, the formula is A minus L over L. What formula? The formula for actual margin for a short sale, okay? And um, the maintenance margin percentage is identical to what it was before, uh, by assumption 30%. And so if your maintenance margin percentage falls below 30, excuse me, if your actual margin percentage falls below 30%, so the actual margin percentage at, at date T is less than 0.3, which is, of course, 30%, then you get a margin call. Okay, now some brokers are automatically, they won't give you a chance to respond. They'll just sell something in your account automatically if it's set up that way. That's portfolio-based margin, but I'm talking the general case where, you know, you get, you know, a little bit of time to respond. So the if the actual margin at day T is less than 0.3, which is 30%, then you get a margin call, and you can respond to it in the same way, the same three things that uh, uh, I talked about with um, uh, margin purchases earlier. Okay? So um, that's how that works. Um, again, uh, one, one thing that's pretty important is that you kind of understand some of the kind of record keeping that's going on and and that's the stuff I was referring to right here okay you know be able to you know think through the record keeping what 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 you were trying you know what you're trying to do is generate uh, profits for yourself okay so I guess in like in a nutshell <clears throat> okay this is what you're hoping um, will happen um, you're hoping that uh, you start off short 100 XYZ at a price of 50 with a market value of minus 5,000 in cash of 5,000. And then uh, uh, another type of cash, this is, a, I'll do it this way, short sale proceeds, initial margin deposit 2,500. Okay, but that's that's money you've added. It's not part of this deal. So these are the two types of cash. By the way, some brokers, um, um, you know, treat these types of cash differently for some reason that, like if you have just cash in your account unrelated to a, 
a margin deposit, then you you might earn interest on that. But some brokers don't pay interest on short sale proceeds or on initial margin deposits. Some brokers charge you to borrow stock shares to short sell. Um, you know, but you know, it's you got to shop. You should say, just like anything else, you shop. Okay, so this is how it starts out, and uh, what you're hoping happens is uh, the fall. I'm just going to kind of ignore the initial margin deposit. But what you're hoping happens again is this. Short 100 X Y Z. This is uh, later, later on, some later date. Um, okay, and it's priced at uh, 10, and the market value uh, is is 10 times minus 100, which is negative 1,000, and your cash, your cash, your short sale proceeds is still 5,000, and right there. There's your 4,000 profit. That's your equity. Okay, so that's what you're hoping happens. But it often doesn't. Okay? Now, interesting things about short sales. Okay? Uh, one thing is that if... Now, think. I'll let you think through this before I just tell you about it. If... What if the stock pays a dividend? What if uh, the company pays a dividend? Well, think about it. The guy whose shares you borrowed and sold still thinks he has those shares. I mean, he can check and see that he doesn't, <clears throat> but he doesn't. So the company's not going to pay him a dividend. The, the dividend's going to go to the person or entity that bought the shares that you that you borrowed and then sold. So what about the person whose shares you borrowed? Well, guess what? When the stock price falls, you benefit as the short seller, but you know the, the, the stock price falls on the ex-dividend date by approximately the amount of the dividend, and you, you benefit from that, but what you have to do is you, the short seller, have to remit the dividend payment to your broker who will then forward that to the person whose shares were lent to you. Okay? Back it up and play that again. That's important to realize. Okay? You as a short seller are responsible for making dividend payments to the investor whose shares you borrowed. Okay? You don't lose because of that because you, when stock price falls, you win in your short position. <clears throat> <clears throat> but you have to remit the dividend <clears throat> to your broker who will see that it gets to the person who shares that, <clears throat> excuse me, you borrowed. Mm. Okay, so that's that's an interesting thing to know about short selling. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. Um, let's, um, I guess that's enough, okay? That's enough for this video. Thank you for watching.